Hi, I'm Alan Balma and welcome to my Model Railroad. My layout is on the Forts Colony Model Railroad Club virtual tour to show you one that's in the early stages of construction. I am two years into what I hope and expect is a 10 year project. I've been fascinated with trains since I've been six years old and even to this day I stop to watch the trains go by and visit as many model railroads as I can. Traditional for men my age, my brothers and I received our first Lionel O-Gage toy train set the Christmas of 1954. The top row on the display is that very well-worn set. In 1956, the second row, a Santa Fe passenger set, added to our layout and was now built on four by eight sheets of plywood in the basement. Looking back, a very fond memory is that my father was just as enthralled as we were. Other than a few short attempts in the 1970s to build a model railroad and setting up the trains that you just saw for our sons, I've only been a model railroad observer. After retiring about six years ago, I started to build a small layout to see if I would like the hobby as well as determine whether my hands were steady enough and my eyes were sure enough. The result is I have not stopped in the hobby since that time. Welcome to my 18 by 30 train room. This room was designed when we built the house for the trains in 2018. As most modeler railroaders will attest, the room is just not big enough. First, I model on an unusual scale, S, 1 to 64. That is, one inch on the model is 64 inches on the real thing. Probably less than 1% of all model railroaders are in S scale. Most S scalers are American Flyer toy train collectors. Gilbert's American Flyer toy trains were Lionel's main competitor in the 1950s. My railroad uses the same relative size equipment, but made closer to real life with much finer detail. We S gaugers call it the perfect size. How I got into the scale is a story for another day. I modeled two towns on the Pennsylvania Railroad Elmira branch in 1956, the last years of steam on the railroad. The Elmira branch went from Williamsport in north central Pennsylvania through Elmira, New York, Watkins Glen, and the Finger Lakes. It terminated in Canandaigua, New York on Canandaigua Lake and at Sodus Point on Lake Ontario. The two towns that I model on the branch are Penyan and Canandaigua, which are about 25 miles apart. As you can see, the railroad is in the early stages of construction. I have completed the bench work. The track work with 35 hand-built switches is almost done. The electrical and electronic control is also virtually complete. My trains are controlled by handheld throttles that talk to the trains digitally. We can control things like speed, sound, and light in each locomotive, and throw switches and trigger special effects. Like your car, there are microcomputers in the locomotives and underneath the layout, which you just saw. The part of the Pennsylvania Railroad that I model in upstate New York goes through rolling hills. And what I've done is created the spine of the terrain using plywood and cardboard, and then it's covered with a mesh of cardboard strips. Following that, we will lay plaster cloth, like the same thing that's used for bone casts, and then it will be painted and scenic materials will be put on it to emulate fields and trees, rivers and streams. I hear train 29, a mixed freight of mostly empties, headed west to Canandaigua Yard from Southport Yard near Elmira, New York. It is headed by Pennsylvania Railroad I-1, Locomotive 4311. This engine type was affectionately nicknamed a hippo. This locomotive is making one of its last trips before the scrap heap due to dieselization. It will cross Cucolate Inlet Bridge and pass between the freight house, which you will see, and a passenger station yet to be built. Train 29 is now entering the yard at Canandaigua where its locomotive will be serviced and made ready for a return trip to Elmira, New York. Its cars will be stored in the yard for final destinations, which are interchanged with the New York Central, local delivery to the industries between Canandaigua and Penyan, and local delivery in Canandaigua to industries on the spur that went all the way out onto Canandaigua Lake. Train number 71 is a local freight that will deliver and pick up cars from Canandaigua to Penyan. The train is headed by an Alco RS3 number 8818. 
in return with cars loaded with fruit, produce, and processed foods, as well as empty coal and tank cars. These cars will be put on a train headed to places like New York City and Philadelphia. Cars from Canandaigua and other nearby towns will also leave on this train as well. This is a switching layout where I am modeling local service to the town of Penyan and Canandaigua. The switching job is to pick up loaded or emptied cars and drop off the same as per the orders of local industries. As in the real life, it is a complex puzzle of moves to accomplish the drops and pickups as well as keep the main line open. Train number 71 is heading into the passing siding at Penyan where it will stop and begin its switching job the train crew is going to uncouple the first two refrigerator cars that are destined for George Hayton and Sons Produce Warehouse. The locomotive and the two cars to be switched are headed out onto the main line from which they'll back up along the long siding that goes into Penyan. The locomotive and its crew are backing into the siding and they'll stop when they get to George Hayton and Sons Produce Warehouse where they'll uncouple these cars and leave them there to be loaded. Train number 28, headed by a pair of RS-11s, is headed to Elmira, New York, and then to points east, hauling an express freight of loaded refrigerator cars, whose final destination will be Philadelphia and New York. Thank you for visiting my model railroad. I hope that you enjoyed this virtual tour. And in the future, we do hope that you'll be able to come in person and visit uh, the improvements and additions that I'll be making over the next year. Mm -hmm.